Okay, we're ready to start the first dishcloth in my Learn to Knit series. And what you will need for all of these dishcloths, as I said in my last video, is you will need one ball of worsted weight cotton. When you look at the yarn label, it's gonna have a number four for medium or worsted weight. It's gonna say that you use a US 7 or 4.5 millimeter needle, and that is what I'm going to use. Um, and it's going to say somewhere on here, 100% cotton. Some brands will also call this household cotton or kitchen cotton, and some will just call it worsted weight or number four cotton. But that's what you want. You want one ball of this to make each washcloth. And as I said before, you will need size seven or 4.5 millimeter knitting needles. These ones, if I can get it to focus. Yeah, it's labeled 4.5 millimeters, which is a US size seven. Um, for beginners, I recommend bamboo or wood because your stitches will not slide around as much on bamboo and wood, but if it's easier for you to get your hands on plastic or metal, go ahead. And to finish up at the end, you will need scissors and a tapestry needle. The first thing you have to do, besides assembling your supplies, is get your hands on the pattern. Now I have the link here, down in the notes, and hopefully you have got it already and get it printed out or opened up on your phone. And it has the pattern for all three dishcloths. This first one is called Garter Stitch Square. It is the most basic of dishcloths. For all of these, the first thing that you need to learn is how to get the yarn onto the needle in the first place. And step one for that is how do you make a slip knot? Because you're gonna need a slip knot. So what you do is get your end of your yarn, make a loop by crossing it, the loose end over the top of the end that's still connected to the ball. Then. Hold it forward and grab that. Then you pull both strands and you've got yourself a slip knot. That is one way to do it. Um, once you get used to doing it, you can do it just in your hand. So you cross the short end over the end that's connected to the ball, fold it over the long end and pull that bit up through the loop and pull it snug and you've got yourself a slip knot. Once you have a slip knot, just slide it onto one of your needles. Now I am going to show you the easiest way to put the yarn onto your needle. For knitting, you have to put all the stitches that you want to start with on the needle right at the beginning. And that is a process that is called casting on. So let's go back to our pattern. It says, cast on 26 stitches. And so that you can learn to read knitting patterns, I've done an abbreviated version. CO, 26 stitches. Cast on 26 stitches. So I'm going to show you what is called the backward loop cast on, or the thumb loop cast on, or the simple cast on. Um, it could be called by any of those, but basically it's you loop around your thumb. So you have the long strand that is attached to the ball still. You loop your thumb around it so that you've got that little X and then you've got the loop around your thumb. Then you swoop the tip of your needle through that loop and pull it snug but not tight. And that is one stitch. Your slip knot is one stitch. That first loop is one stitch. Let me demonstrate again. This is the long strand. 
that is still attached to your ball. Swoop your thumb behind it and around to make a loop. If you hold it up, you can see it makes an X. Then you swoop the tip of your needle up from underneath it onto your thumb to pick up that loop and pull it snug but not tight. You still want it to be able to slide. Let me demonstrate again. Swoop your thumb behind the yarn to pull up a loop. If you look at it from below, there will be an X. If you look at it from the side, it's just looped around your thumb. You want to go up the side of your thumb from beneath with the tip of your needle and catch that loop. Pull it snug but not tight. So now we're up to four stitches. I'm going to do it a little bit faster. Behind the yarn, make the twist. Up underneath the loop, catch it, pull it snug. Five stitches. Six stitches. Seven stitches. Eight. Nine. 10, let me slow it down again. Thumb behind the yarn, give it a twist. Hold on to the rest of the yarn with the other part of your fingers so it doesn't come loose. Keep that as a loop. The tip going up from underneath your thumb, catch the loop, release it from your thumb, pull it snug. Make the loop, the one behind the yarn, pulling it around your thumb. Go up to the loop from underneath, catch the loop with your tip, release it from your thumb, pull it snug. So what are we at now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I am going to continue until I get 26 stitches on here and I'll probably play it at a sped up rate. So you can just watch and if you need to rewind and watch how I did it over and over again until you've got it figured out. I suggest practicing this several times. Make sure you know what you're doing when you're done. That's what one side is going to look like. That's what the other side is going to look like. And the last one, the loose yarn, is going to be coming from in between the two stitches. So make sure it looks like that when you're done. Okay, so watch me go. I've got 12. Okay, once you have all 26 stitches on your needle, this is going to become the needle that you hold in your left hand. So this little strand will be closest to your hand. This one will be at the tip. And we're going to start knitting. What I'm going to teach you is called, <clears throat> excuse me, is called the knit stitch. So first you've got to learn to hold your yarn. You have to be able to keep some tension in it. So I like to wrap it around my pinky finger, then under my other fingers, and over my pointer finger. So let me demonstrate that again. I just sort of scoop it with my pinky and wrap it, squeeze it with these two middle fingers, and then have it go over the top of my pointer finger. That is how I control it when I am, this is called the working yarn. When I'm holding the working yarn with my right hand, this is how I hold it. And there's a left-handed way to do it also. I actually like to hold my yarn in the left hand, but I'm gonna show you both ways. This way is called the American or English style or throwing. 
and I think most knitters in America do it this way or learn it this way, so I'm going to demonstrate this way. But later I'm also going to demonstrate the other way, which is called continental style or picking. So you hold the yarn with some tension and you scooch your first needle to the tip and you hold. I'm actually going to get my hand a little bit closer. I like to hold it pretty close so that I can have both tips under control. So this is your working needle and your working yarn in your right hand. So the tip of the right hand needle or the working needle goes through from, I'm going to call it body side to point side. So this side of the stitch is towards your body. That side of the stitch is toward the point of the needle. So you go through body side to point side, or if you hold it this way, you can see that you're going in from the left side and coming out the right side. So from left to right, through the loop. And you are all the way through the loop. Oh, see, I split the yarn. Let me do it again without splitting the yarn. From the left, in at the left, out at the right, all the way through. Man, this yarn is very splitty. It's gonna happen to you too, so watch for that. Okay. So you want both tips to be through the same loop. Going in the right, the left side of the loop, coming out the right side of the loop. Then you're gonna kind of stretch and turn your working needle so that the two needles are crossed. This is where the throwing part comes in. You throw the yarn around the needle. Let me demonstrate that again. So the yarn right now is hanging out the bottom back of where you're at. So you throw it around the bottom of that backhand needle, around, up, and over. Like that. You show it from this angle. So I'm going around underneath and bringing it up and over around from underneath, bringing it up and over. Once it is securely over, you use the tip of your working needle to pull that through the loop right here. And then you slide that loop off. And you have your first knit stitch. Let me show you again. So you slide the next loop down to the tip. Go in from the left to come out up the right, throw the yarn under, around, and over. Use the tip to pull it through. Let me go up close and show it to you again. You go in the left side of the loop, come out the right side of the loop, cross the needles. This is your working yarn. It will now be coming off of your working needle. The working yarn is now coming off of a loop on your working needle. You throw it under, around, and over your working needle. You're never gonna look at it upside down like this, but I will show it to you just so you see how it works. Under, around, and over the tip of your working needle. Pull it through drop the first loop off and it'll stay hooked together and go slow again from the left side into the left out to the right under around over through slide the next loop down in through the left side, out through the right side, under, around, over, 
through. Oh, that time I split the yarn. See that? So I'm gonna redo that one. And be more careful not to split the yarn. That's the one problem with kitchen cotton is it does split easily. So there. Now you can see all the way through, you can see I'm not splitting the yarn. In through the left, out through the right, under, over, around, and through. In the left hand side, out the right hand side, under, around, and over, pull it through. I'm going to do the rest of the stitches. You can rewind this as many times as you need. So I'm not going to describe it anymore. I'm just going to keep knitting the rest of the row. Now when you're a beginner, you really only want to push one loop at a time to the tip. When you're more advanced, you can have a bunch of loops there at the tip bunched up so you know what you're doing. But as a beginner, try to just sort of keep one loop near the tip and the rest a little bit back. Hold them back with your hand. That one I'm splitting. Let me fix this. I'm not splitting. There we go. Now I'm not splitting. Now into my last stitch, which is that slip knot. And you do that just the same as the others. Now all, now you have all your loops back on your right hand needle and there's sort of two rows of them. The row that you cast on with your thumb and the row that you just knit. So the empty needle now becomes your working needle. The needle with the stitches on it becomes your constant needle, your, I don't know if there is a word for that. It's the stitch needle, whatever. <laughs> working needle, other needle. Um, and it goes in your left hand, the working needle goes back to your right hand. Some people can knit left-handed. I have not learned that. So now that we've got our first row knitted, using the throwing technique with holding the yarn in your right hand. I'm going to show you how to hold the yarn in your left hand to do what's called continental or picking technique. Again, I go around my pinky, squeeze it in my other fingers and hold it up with my pointer. So what you do with your working needle is mostly the same. You go in the loop, from the right to, I mean, from the left to the right. Now, instead of having it here and throwing it all the way around, it's just right there for you to scoop it up, to pick it up. That's why it's called picking. So let me show you that one more time. You go in just the same as if you were holding the yarn in the other side, but instead of having to throw it all the way around the needle, you just pick it up with the tip, pull it through and drop the original loop. So you go again, in from the left, out through the right, then pick it up, pull it through. Again, um, you're sort of coming down from on top of the yarn, so it does sort of wrap underneath and over again, but instead of having to do a big motion to do it, you're just scooping it up with the tip of your needle or picking it up. That's why the one is called throwing because you're throwing the yarn all the way around. Well, with this one, you're just picking it up, picking it up. Now, 
we are still just doing knit stitches the exact same. When you do knit stitches on both sides of the fabric, it is called garter stitch. That's why this is called a garter stitch square. Okay, left to right, then come down from on top and pick it up. In left to right, pick it up. In left to right. So your working needle should be over top of your working yarn. You scoop it underneath and pick it up. Working yarn is still attached to the working needle. Working needle goes in from the left, out from the right, over top of that working yarn, scoops underneath it and picks it up. Now I am going to finish this row working continental style or picking. I find that continental style goes a lot faster for me. Some people to like to hold it with a big piece of yarn. I like to hold it really close. You just find what works for you. And you just shift the needles along as you need to make space. And now we have two rows of knit stitches. And it's gonna get this sort of bumpy appearance going. So what I want you to do is just keep on knitting. When you fill the needle, move it back to your left hand. Take your empty needle with your right hand and just keep knitting back and forth until you have knit a square. Now I will come back in just a second to show you a tip for how to tell once it's square and to show you what a finished garter stitch piece looks like. Now, rewind this as many times as you need to see the cast on, to see how to knit with your right hand, how to knit holding the yarn in your left hand. Practice both ways, decide which one works best for you, and use that way to knit your square. And I'll see you in just a second to show you how to finish. Okay, I am back. I have knitted my whole square. Now here's a good tip for how you can check it's a square. As it starts to look more and more square, take one of the bottom corners and fold it all the way up so that the edge lines up with your needle. And if you do that and it folds nicely into a right triangle here with both sides matching, you've got yourself a square. It doesn't have to be a perfect square, but something close to a square. And it'll be the perfect size to be a little pot scrubber, or you could even use it as a pot holder. If you've got the nice thick kitchen cotton, you can pick up warm pots with it or set them down on it. Now, before I show you how to finish your knitting, I am going to demonstrate a few troubleshooting items. So, Something that happened to me when I first started knitting is I would be knitting along and I'd be getting ready to start a new row and I'd pull this string tight, the working string tight to start knitting and I would accidentally stretch out this bottom stitch and knit into these when really I'm supposed to be wrapping this behind. So that's something to watch for. So it's really easy, you finish on one side, yay, you finished your row, you turn it around, and get ready to hold it, and you lift up the string, 
and you pull it over the top instead of wrapping it around the back. If you pull it over the top, those almost look like two different stitches. And if you knit into both of them, you're gonna create two new stitches where there was only one before, and your knitting is gonna start getting bigger and bigger on this one edge if you keep doing that. So watch that you don't pull it over the top. Make sure that you, if, you're, if you turn it around and the yarn is coming out the front, you gotta wrap it around the back before you start making new stitches. So that's one tip to watch for. Now I'm gonna slide a few of these needles, I mean a few of these stitches, back onto my other needle so that I can demonstrate what happens if you drop a stitch. So, you're knitting along, and you fumble a little and whoops, it popped right off. Don't panic. Move slowly. Grab the loop. Get it back on the tip. Now, we have this little thing here, because guess what? It fell all the way out. So when you have a situation like this, I like to slide this needle down so that we don't drop any more. So then we've just got this one messed up stitch to deal with. So if you look at the fabric you're making, it's garter stitch fabric. It's these ridges of bumps, and in between the bumps, there's these little V's. So you'll see a row of bumps or a ridge, a garter stitch ridge, and in between the ridges, there's these little V's going into loops. So that's how the fabric is supposed to look. A garter stitch ridge, which is the ridge of bumps, and then the V's going into loops in between. So we've got to look up here at the stitch that fell out. The stitch that fell out was part of a row of the bumps. So when we fix the stitch, we've got to make sure it looks like the bumps. But I want to show you how to fix the ones that look like bumps and the one that looks like these. These, I, I mean. So I'm going to let purposefully another stitch drop so that I can show you how to fix the V and then I will show you how to fix the bump. Okay. So, what I've got is this dropped stitch, and it has unraveled two rows. If you turn it around, you can see that there are two rows unraveled there. Now, you can't fix the one on top first because that's the most recent stitch. You have to fix the oldest rows first. So this is the oldest row, and that's what's gotta be fixed first. You've gotta fix them in order from the bottom up. So, let's turn it back around to the front that we were working on. So this bottom one, which is the first one we've gotta fix, is part of the row of V's. So we want to fix it to look like that, to look like the V's. So you can use a tapestry needle or something that I like to do is if you have a crochet hook, you can use a crochet hook. And when you're doing the V's, it's super easy. You take the loose strand and you pull it through the loop to the front. And look, you've got the V's. So I did that one with a crochet hook, but you don't always have a crochet hook handy. You could even do it with the tip 
of your other needle, but that gets a little fiddly. I'm gonna do this other one with a tapestry needle. So that one was the V. You just reach through the loose loop of the last stitch that was completed and pull the strand through from back to front and that'll make the V's. So now I need to show you how to make the bumps. For the bumps you want to get the dropped strand onto the needle and then we want this stitch to be behind it. So now I've got it oriented. The dropped strand is on the needle and this live loop is behind it on the needle. I pulled it back behind the strand. Now we're going to do it like a reverse knitting. You stick whatever tool you have through the front loop and you're going to hook this strand and pull it through. So this time you're pulling from front to back. To make the V, you pulled from back to front. Now we're pulling from front to back. So if it's easier for you to pull from back to front, you could have just turned this around and it would have been Look, on the back side, the ridges are V's. So we could have just reached through and pulled it through from back to front if we had turned it around. But I wanted you to see how to fix it from the front side. That is kind of tricky. So if you drop some stitches and you're really confused about it, I suggest rewinding this and watching it several times. But the key is, for garter stitch fabric, you want to make sure you've got a row of bumps and then a row of V's. To fix the B V's, you pull the dropped strands through the live loop from back to front. To fix the dropped bumps, you hook the live strands and pull them from front to back. So V's are back to front, bumps are front to back. I know it's a little confusing, that's why you want to rewind it and watch it several times. Now I'm just going to slide these back to the needle where they belong because it is time to show you how to finish your first dishcloth. And this is what's called binding off or casting off. I usually say binding off because that makes more sense to me. Now I'm just going to show you the most standard and basic bind off. Just like with casting on, there's more than one way to bind off, there's more than one way to cast on. I showed you the easiest way to cast on, now I'm going to show you the easiest, most basic way to bind off. I'm going to do it right handed for a few stitches, then I'm going to do it left handed for a few stitches so that you can see both ways. So you start out as if you're going to start knitting a row. Knit a stitch pull it off. Knit another stitch. Drop that loop. Now stop. Pause. You've got two new stitches on your needle. Instead of continuing to knit, we're going to take the first stitch that you knitted, the one that's closest to your hand. We're going to hook into it. We're going to slide these down to the end and we're pulling that first stitch over the top of the stitch closest to the tip. And now it is secure, it's not going to unravel. Let me show you that again. That is one stitch bound off. So now this is a live stitch. We're going to knit another stitch. So now we have two live stitches. The one that's closest to the tip is going to stay a live stitch. The one that's closest to your hand, we're going to pull it over the top and secure it to bind it off. So you just loop it, you pull it over the top of that other live stitch, 
Bam. Now we've got two stitches bound off. Let me show you again. Do a normal knit stitch. But now, the one closest to the tip, you're going to keep. The one closest to your hand, you're going to pull over it. That's called binding it off. Just like that. I'll show it to you a few more times with the right hand. And then I will switch to the left hand. So the loop closest to the tip stays live. The loop closest to your hand, you hook into it and pull it over the live stitch. closest to your hand over top of the new stitch. I'm going to switch the working yarn to my left hand and show you from that point of view. Again, you just pick up your new stitch, then go to the previous stitch. With this one, holding it with the left hand, these have a tendency to inch closer and closer to the tip. So since we're using this tip, I, I need to pinch back the, the stitches with my thumb. And then we just do the same action. We hook the older stitch and pull it over the newer stitch and keep that new stitch live. Then make another new stitch. Hook the older stitch, pull it over the newer stitch. Make a new stitch. Hook the older stitch. Pull it over the newer stitch. Hook the older stitch. Pull it over the newer stitch. I'm just going to keep doing this until we reach our last stitch. Okay, now you can see what it looks like when you have done that. This is the bound off edge. All those stitches pulled over one another make this nice, pretty attractive edge over here. So we do that one more time with the last stitch. Then we're left with this one loop here. You could tie a knot with it, but I have found that in general, it is plenty secure. Sorry, I didn't have my scissors ready. Got my scissors. If you just give it a snip at this point, and just keep on pulling that loop all the way through. Oh, you've got a tail there and then look at that we've got a nice little dishcloth or pot holder whichever you'd rather use it as and it is not a perfect square but it is close to a perfect square garter stitch dish rag you did it there is one final step and that is what is called weaving in your ends. That's what the tapestry needle is for. So, what you do 
is you get the loose end onto your tapestry needle and then I am going to kind of follow the path of some of these yarns. So I'm going to bring my end down here. And I am going to just kind of recreate a few of these stitches. So that they are doubled over stitches. So I'm just sort of tracing the path of the yarn that has gone before. And this end I made a little too short, so it keeps falling out. So sometimes if it's short like this, it will fall out on you. And you'll have to kind of put the needle where you want it to go and then re-thread the needle. So where would I want this one to go next? I'll turn it over and trace it down and copy this loop here. What you're trying to do is you're just trying to make the end meld in invisibly with your knitting. And this one, since it was the slip knot at the beginning and it's totally not going to come undone, I'm just going to I'm going to go all the way down through this one. And then loop it back up through here, like that. And then I'm just going to snip it off. So see how it just kind of completely blends in? If you didn't know you were looking for it, you wouldn't see that that stitch is doubled there. Just be careful not to cut your other loops when you're trimming the end. There. You can't hardly see it. Tiny little bit of fuzz, but it's barely visible. So you do the same thing with your other end. Basically, you are just trying to trace the path of where some yarn has already gone and duplicate the stitches. And if you do that, your yarn from this loose end will just sort of meld in almost invisibly. So I'm going to trace this loop right here. And that yarn goes through there and then down through there. So that's what I'm tracing. And then it goes back up through here and here. So I'm just going to trace a few of these stitches and they are going to be doubled over. But once the end is trimmed, it'll be almost invisible. Two more, I think. Down and up, and then I'm going back down the last time. Then I'm going to trim the sun. And our first dishcloth is done. So, if you're still at a beginning stage, if you're still just starting to knit, that's totally cool. Rewind and watch the steps that you are still unsure on. Watch them over and over and copy them. 
and then when you come to the next stage, when you come to the binding off, watch that a few times before you do it. Watch the weaving in a few times before you do it. Repetition is the key for learning this. And if it looks a little weird, don't worry. I've been knitting for a really long time, and so mine looks pretty uniform and nice, but that's just because I have lots of experience. If yours is kind of crooked or weird edges or lumpy or stretched out in certain areas and tight in other areas, don't worry about it. It's just a little tiny dishcloth. Go scrub your pots with it. Who cares how it looks? This is just practice. That's why it's a great beginner project because it's just practice and it doesn't have to look awesome. But it gives you a feel for knitting. And now you know how to do a cast on and a knit stitch and a bind off. Congratulations, you are a knitter now. In the second in the series, I'm going to show you how to do a somewhat more complicated stitch pattern, but still super basic. I'm gonna teach you the purl stitch, which you may have heard of, you may not have, but you will know it when you see it. So go have fun finishing your first dishcloth and I will see you soon for your next dishcloth. Have fun crafting. Bye-bye.